Columbus. I work with Max Foundry. Uh, we're a plug-in shop up there. You may have heard us with Max Buttons, maybe. We also have a, a premium version, but um, the free version is, is awesome as well. It's a way to create CSS3 uh, gradients and buttons in WordPress and then just use a short code. So if you're looking for something to create a button easily, that's, that's, uh, that's us, that's Max Foundry. So loops on loops. And also this is gonna be on, uh, love the Velcro. No, it's okay. Um, it's online already at johnbhartley.com slash query. And also it's on GitHub. Uh, I'm just, my username is John B. Hartley. Everything about me is John B. Hartley. My middle initial is actually J as well. So now it's uh, B. But um, yeah, John Hartley's a senator in Texas. I, I stole my site. Anyway, um, so yeah, if you go to GitHub and look up user John Hartley or John B. Hartley, this is up there, uh, and you can take a look and pull this stuff down. It's a full install of GitHub, or not GitHub, but WordPress, and I have a theme that I've kind of done some different loops on. So, the loop. Has anyone seen Looper? It's about Joseph Gordon-Levitt having to kill his future self and essentially close the loop. And by the end of the day, you'll understand pretty well how to close the loop in, in several different ways. So it's essential, every theme, every page, every um, self-respecting post page, uh, every template has some form of loop on it. And that's how WordPress pulls in all the information from the database. Um, it's magical to some, some think server gnomes, you know, come through the loop and bring you all the information. Uh, but really it's just a lot of code that's, that's hidden in the includes and um, other files that you probably haven't ever seen before, which is okay. It's usable in many ways. And this is the standard loop. So if have posts, while have posts, the post, then you put in the standard, you know, the content, uh, the time, the date, whatever you need in there, and then you end it with and while and and if. In 2012, this is what the index page looks like for the loop. So you have if have posts and while have posts, the posts, and then you get template part content. And then in 2014, you'll see that they've commented it much better. So in two years, they learned how to comment a lot better, um, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But they also have the, the paging nav in there as well. So how do, how, what, what is have posts? And to this I say, to the core. Well, not, not the abs core, but uh, WordPress core, we have in query.php, which is in WP includes, you have this function called have posts. Now when you take a look at this, uh, if you're not really all that into PHP and WordPress is kind of your introductory to PHP, you're probably like, yeah, this is, this is a little beyond me. But that's okay. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It says if current post, you know, plus one is less than this post count, then just return this true. And so essentially this is saying, you know, if this is good to go, it's, it's in the loop and continue through. So what is the post? So the post has all the information, right? Because that's the last thing that happens in the functions. Well, you look at this, and it kind of has global post, and it's in the loop, it's true. And do action ref array, that loop start. So all the loops are happening and moving around, and who, who's totally confused by kind of what's happening. If you are, it's, it's really okay. The first time I looked through this stuff, I had no idea. I had to continue looking through it. But nobody raised their hand, so it's good. You all understand? And, uh, so set up post data, which we see down here at the bottom. Set up post data is the most important part as it sets up all the globals for post. So clearly, I mean, it has more code, so it's more important, right? So you have this function, set up post data, and you get the global ID, author data, current day, month, page, pages, multi-page. And so it kind of goes through all of this different pieces of information, and it'll give you that global array of data that you can then use in the content, uh, the, the time, and whatever kind of other little snippets you're going to use where the HTML is going to go. So the globals are now ready. So why do we need a loop? Like I said, it runs everything. You have your posts, pages, attachments, uh, any form of media, any other thing really that's controlled by WordPress, custom post types, all happen and are shown to the front end with the loop. Remember the ABCs, always be closing. Uh, if you've seen that movie as well, it doesn't really apply necessarily to WordPress, but it's closing the loop, 
because it's important. And if you have an unclosed loop, and you may have done this before, especially if you develop locally, it's not so bad, but you'll see this, blank white page. What happened? Where's my stuff? No menu, no footer, nothing in the middle. It's just this blank white page. And basically, all I did here is I wrote the loop, and then I left off the end if. And also, if you leave off the semicolon at the end, it'll do the same thing. Um, that's why I always recommend turning on debugging. Does anybody debug here? Lots of debuggers. That's great. Also, Joe gets really pissed <laughs> if, if the loop's not closed. Then you get in this quandary of, do I have to kill myself? Do I kill my other self? Which, anyway. Um, so I love the WordPress codex. I think anybody that works on it and works on that documentation is awesome. I was talking to Dustin, who works at Automatic. Um, he was saying that when they upgraded to uh, 3.8, they had to go back through and redo pretty much all the screenshots that are in the documentation. And so that alone was just an insane amount of work. So you think about all of the functions, all the action hooks, all the filter hooks that go into WordPress that are in the codex, and it, it's just nuts to me. But I spend a lot of my time in there just kind of reading through documentation because, I mean, what else are you going to do on Friday night? <laughs> okay, so it says iterate the post index in the loop, uh, retrieves the next post, sets up the post, sets the in the loop property to true, which is the small version of what we saw in all that code, uh, which is inside query.php. So back to the post. We have this small function that we know with the setup post data function really becomes something much larger. There's also an action hook that is the post. So make sure you're not confusing the two. Um, if you don't use the actual function in your loop, then it, it won't work properly. So this is, you know, this is the meat and potatoes. This is kind of what makes everything run. So basically, the way it's set up, and again, if you know much about PHP, you know that there are different, different ways to write things out. Um, the way that it's written in most themes is the alternative syntax for control structures, AKA the easy way, the easier on the eyes way. Some people like to break it out more, uh, and you can see here that this is the more broken out way where you have kind of your curly braces and everything in there. Um, I found that if I'm nesting loops, that it becomes a little harder to tell what's going on if I've broken it out like this. So I tend to keep it with just the, the colons um, and do it in that way. So there are different ways to extend the loop. We have query posts, we have get posts, we have new WP query, we have WPDB, and then you can just SQL everything if you're hardcore like that. Um, so how many people have used query posts? How many people have used get posts? How many people have used WP query? How many people have used WPDB? Okay, I lost a lot of you on WPDB, which is okay. That one is generally more for updating, um, sending more information, kind of making new insertions. Uh, a lot of plugins will use it. Um, but yeah, that one is a little more on the SQL side. So it's, I, even I have some more issues with that. You're, you're pretty good with it though? Or you've just used it before? I've uh, just used it a couple times. Okay. You know, plug in here and there, but I've never really gone like. Fair enough. So we'll start to go through all of these. Um, we have this make sense of WP query functions, which is a great chart. It's gonna figure out the best way to get to your content. Uh, we have query posts, which is for the main loop only. That's important to remember. Um, it extends that primary loop. Now if you use query string, which you'll see here in a minute, that also is a global, which is attached to that main loop. If you use it on index, it's fine. If you use it on a different page, it doesn't work. At least in my experience, if somehow it does work for you, let's talk afterward, because you're a magician. Um, <laughs> so then you also have a new WP query. Really everything kind of runs to that at some point. Uh, if you're using new WP query, then you're just kind of trimming off the fat and not using get posts or query posts. You're just kind of going straight to the source and then going straight through there. This is probably going to be better if you look at it later on, uh, since it's pretty small up there. But it's a, it's a great little infographic for the query functions. So we'll go over query posts first. And this is what I was talking about, the query string. It extends the main loop but only works on index. So you have right here where this would be your general loop that's on the index page. 
and you can extend it right here and let's add the category of 19. So I don't want all my posts, I just want those that are in category 19. I don't want to use new WP query, I don't want to use get posts, um, so I can just extend this right here. Also used in this way, and that's without the query string, so you're not really, I mean, in a way you're just extending it, but you're not adding on as much. So it's strongly recommended that instead of doing that and using query posts in that way, that you use a pre get post filter instead and alter the main query in that way. I personally don't do that because I, I don't really use query posts all that much. Um, I tend to lean more on new WP query, but we'll get into that momentarily. So more on query posts. You can also break it out. Uh, as we saw, you can use an array. So right there you can break it out even further and use a bunch of different arguments in order to get the desired result. You can also add on to the query vars that are already in place and merge those two arrays together. Oh, uh, one thing that I didn't mention is that another issue with query posts is that if you want to have multiple queries, you have to then reset the query uh, at the end of this query, so at the end of that loop. All right, so get posts for fans of arrays. There's an there's array and another array. So we have this get post and it extends main loop, but only, no, that's not right. Okay, forget, forget that line right there. So get post you can use anywhere. And this returns an array and you can have a lot more arguments in here. And I, I like having my arguments broken out. Uh, I find that it's more maintainable in that sense. So if you're a theme developer or someone that's building a site for a client um, and you know you're gonna have some support later on, it's, it's easier to, especially if you're not commenting things all that well, go back in and see, oh, well, I wrote this array out, and I can see in, in plain English here, you know, the meta key, exclude, include, order, order by. Um, and that breaks it out further so you don't have to use the, the ampersand to connect everything. So get posts, this is just an example. Um, we have our array here of category 19. Posts per page is 10. And then my posts is going to get posts of the args. So that's just an array. It becomes an array. And then we use a for each loop to then output everything. And that would be the same as outputting what we had on our initial index.php page. Just to show you an example, um, this is then you know, our 10 titles that we had. And extending the query previously, this is that same thing. So I've, I've clicked and I've switched back to that index.php file, um, and it's written out differently, and it uses different query, but it's the same content. So that's just a quick way to show you know, that everything, all these examples are, are going to show the, the same thing, essentially. This is just different ways to reach the same common end result. So WP query, um, as I said, is my favorite. And this one breaks it down even further, in my opinion, because it, it gives you many more options in terms of your arguments. Show you an example. Same thing again. So we have query posts, uh, extend query, get posts, new WP query. This one's especially good for custom post types uh, because you can set the post type. And just to show you some of the different arguments, this is just the Categories and the tags, and more on the taxonomies, and then a few other things that you can mention in here. So at the bottom, you have post type and post status. Um, those allow you to you know, query the different post types. So if you have a products post type, you can query that instead of just the, the main posts or pages. Uh, if you have a potato category, you can just select those potatoes and return those results. So WPDB, as you can see here, is uh, you have many SQL queries, and it becomes a little harder to read, a little less maintainable. Uh, so for get results, this is going to give you that, that same result that we had over here. So WPDB gives you the same result, but because there isn't an ordering property in here, 
it's not going to be the, the same. I mean, there's order by uppercase. Um, but oh, overall, I find this to be very confusing. I, I didn't come from a SQL background. Um, so in terms of database interaction, I understand it for the most part, but I, I'm not very good at writing SQL queries. I kind of let PHP my admin, uh, I go in there or use, use my SQL. Then same thing again. Yep, that's code. Different way to write it and different result as well. So as I was kind of going through all of these, I, the question came across as to which one is better to use um, in terms of optimization. So we've heard about front-end optimization. I, I was curious about some of the back-end optimization in terms of those queries. So I, I'm going to switch back over here now. I use a, am I not logged in anymore? Use a plugin called Query Monitor. That takes a look at, fantastic. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. All right, so I'll, I'll just summarize what, uh, what I saw here. Is that with Query Monitor, it shows you how long it took the query to happen, how many queries actually happened, and then what it was querying. Uh, with the extend query, because this is a local site, it didn't take very long. I think it was 0.13 seconds to, to get the data. Uh, same with query post. Get post was a little slower, and then WP query was a little bit faster. Um, again, I, I don't have those numbers because I'm, I'm now locked out of my site. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the WP DB, those actually turned out to be the fastest, and those had the fewest queries. Among the things that were being queried, um, including, including the user, which was me, uh, and all the other information that it was pulling in the, the admin header, WPDB still pulled that stuff, but had less things to query because you're going directly to the database and kind of superseding all the other portions of that query. So, wow, that was really short. I don't really have anything else. I mean, there's not, I, we could look at some code, some different examples of how to kind of manipulate the query after, after you have it. So including some PHP conditionals, things like that. I, I don't know what you guys would be interested in. So by a show of hands, conditionals, using conditionals to manipulate the loop. Does anybody know what that means? Does everybody know what that means? Okay. All right, so some basic PHP uh, that we can use for, let's see. Does anyone use Foundation? Foundation from Zurb. Um, they have a slider called their Orbit slider. Is that really hard to see? Okay. Is that easier to see? Or would a different color work better? I good? Okay. Um, so they have this orbit query. Now, the problem that I was posed with was I needed to query a custom post type. I needed to also then take that custom post type, put four inside of a list element, and then I needed to close that list element. That way it would slide through uh, from four to the next four to the next four to the next four. In order to do that, I used the um, new WP query. And so right here, you can see this is where things start to get a little different. This is using some PHP logic. If I, which I've set as zero at the beginning of my loop right here, if that is divisible by four and then the remainder is zero, then toss this in. So toss in you know, the beginning of my list element and this 12 column span that I'm gonna put my information into. So then it goes through even further and says, okay, well, I'm gonna get the post thumbnail for that, and then I'm going to give it a class of large three, which is the, the foundation jargon for it's going to take up 25% of this div. Then you add one to i, and then if it's divisible by four, and the remainder is zero, then you just close it all out. So in that way, you can get four images across, wrap them all inside of your, your list element, and then move on to the next slide, essentially. Anybody have any questions on that? Is that over everybody's head? 
Everybody good? Should I move on? Okay. So in here, I had a category query, which went through and it grabbed the potato category. It got all the terms for that category and put it into an array. Then I looped through the array with a for each. Uh, it output a menu that would then be horizontal navigation at the top of the page. And then down here, um, I came up with a new WP query, which took all of those taxonomy slugs and took it through here, used that same array. And for each of those taxonomy terms, it then goes through its own loop and outputs into its own div. So for Idaho potato category, you'd have you know, your nine different pictures of Idaho potatoes. Uh, for russet potatoes, I'm not a farmer, by the way, if anybody. <laughs> so if, I, if I'm saying the same name for a potato, um, you know, don't get on me about that. Uh, but yeah, right here you can see if, if query has posts, that, that's another part of WP query is that um, when you create a new instance of WP query and you give it this variable of query, that then has to go through your loop. So for if query, if that query, if that new instance of WP query has posts, then you can move on. And once you do move on, you know, echo out that unordered list. Start that unordered list. And while you do have posts in that query, then use the content of the post from each of the posts in that query. And that just outputs the title, and I think there was a thumbnail in there as well. And so after you end the while, you echo out the close of your unordered list, and then you also, after the end if, close out your div. Um, so that's one thing that I didn't used to know is that inside your end if, you can actually put the beginning and end of that div. Uh, that way, if you don't have any posts at all, this is more for um, if you're building a theme for ThemeForest or for the WordPress repository. If there isn't actually any posts in there, you won't show that beginning and end and div. So you won't have an empty element uh, that's wasting space in your page. Why did you use a while instead of for each? In here? Yeah. Um, well, for this, it, it was the it was just standard loop. Or up here, did you mean for so each? The, the one for right here? Yeah. Uh, so I was already in a for each loop and was just going to use WP query. So instead of using another for each, I just use the if query has posts in order to get to the post. I'm sure there's multiple ways to do it. Um, that's just kind of, anybody else want to weigh in? What, this one up here? I can't read it too well. Yeah, no, like for, for each, each, you would need to update the text. So is there a place? Uh, text terms. Like yeah, so up here I have an array of tax terms. Yeah, and just with a while, we had no need to do any updates to each of these because they knew we had them. So we didn't tell them to do it yet. So it makes sense why you did a while in some cases. OK. Question. The while seems more for each. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see, I think I have one more. Okay, blog query. This one was for, if you have a home page, um, one of the toughest parts for me with multiple queries is deciding if there's a different layout, is figuring out you know, how to display that information without making multiple queries and you know, hitting the database more times than I need to. It used to be that if I had a layout of, I forgot there's a whiteboard here, this is great. So you have right here, you know, your, your main slider. We're going to go with a magazine layout. You have a slider, uh, which some people say carousels aren't necessary, which I don't disagree with. Um, then you have content on the right. You have three boxes right there. And then each box below that is just a big one until you decide to use your pagination. So in order to get this, you could run you know, several queries that each one outputs differently in the size, uh, whatever the classes that you're using, depending on your theme. Um, for foundation, this would be you know, a, a large eight and then a large four, and then a, a large four, a four, a four. Um, but to get that, we kind of do the same thing that we did with that slider, which is, did I go to blog category? 
I don't think I actually updated this. Um, okay, forget that code that's there. Just look at this over here. Um, so you have this, and for this section, you'd use that same if statement that we used in the slide. So I'll go back to the slide. We can take a look here. So if i is equal to 1, you know, you would have uh, this output. If i is equal to 2 or 3, you'd have this output. And you can do it in that way inside the query. And that's kind of the, the best way that I've found um, to kind of differentiate the output of the layout. If there's a better way to do it, I mean, I'm, I'm all ears. I work kind of a, alone most of the time, so it may not be best practices. It works, though, and it's not multiple queries. Uh, so that, to me, meant that you know, it's going to be optimized, at least in, in some way. In terms of how much time each of those is actually going to take, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, but overall, I think the fewer times you can hit the database, the, the better off you're going to be. Any questions? I've now reached the, the peak of all the content that I have. Yes? Well, I just uh, had a question that I think gets to what our topic we're talking about a little bit is uh, when the call WP reads that post data, mm -hmm. um, I just sort of understood that doing it basically all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> what's the harm. Um, but it's one of the, you know, if you're using a lot of WP sparing and calling the post, strange things can happen. Right. Yeah, mul multiple queries especially is when that becomes really important. Um, and same thing with uh, just, I think, resetting the query um, with query posts. But yeah, if, if things are looking kind of funky, then you may need to kind of flush things and, and do a reset. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Okay. Yeah, if you're multiple queries, like you said, you can get rid of the mm -hmm. Any other questions or comment? Yes. Um, when did you use the most appropriate applicable instances to use transients? Transients? Um, so that, that's for caching, right? Yes. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the main queries, so WP query and then get posts and query posts, those all have their own cache. It, so if you load all that information for the first time, if you change it from 10 to 30 posts that you're then loading on that page, um, well, I guess that's more of a page cache. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know a whole lot about transients. I'm using it as an API for a particular API for the Yeah. Yeah, so if you need to store information, that then it is going to be used over and over again. But um, as you were saying with API, you know, you can't hit it too many times, or else they, they punish you by showing nothing instead. Uh, transients are, are going to probably be your best bet. You don't sound convinced. No, I'm fine. OK, OK, that's fine. Uh, any other comments, questions? Anything to add? Anything that I glossed over? That um, Nothing? Yes? So like the, the meta key in the yeah, query? Yeah, do stuff like that. It's a little more precise. Right. It's really handy to know. It's kind of a light bulb moment for me when I got to it. Yeah. And kind of going off of that then, um, when you use a custom taxonomy, make sure that you're actually using that as the, the category. So if you're just using a standard WordPress category, then you'll call that with category. But if you're using you know, potato category is your taxonomy, then you would say you know, potato category and then use whatever category is in there. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff to look into with this. I, I've barely touched you know, the majority of this. Um, it's much more than, than I knew two years ago. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Comments? Questions? Further cool things that you've experienced with the loop? Revelations? Epiphanies? Yes? I have one other thing. Um, I've noticed some teams, like I think a lot of the WordPress core teams, uh, they modulate the loop out of the page. They have like loop something.php. What is, is there really a, a purpose for that? 
Um, I I normally like to keep everything in the same file. I know there's a lot of get template part that people use to use the loop in there, but I don't know. I, Yeah. If you, if you create just that loop segment in your child scene and not have to do the whole page. Right. So I, I prefer to write one loop and then conventionally control how that loop occurs. So in your simple files, you'll have your index file, you have archive file, you have taxonomy file, you have single page file. A lot, a lot, yeah, and a lot of times, and uh, yeah, you can use archive, page, the page type. So a lot of times I just write one loop and then I'll use the conditioning to create content that I want for that particular page. Right. And that just keeps me from having duplicate kind of content. You know, if I have styles in there that have to change, I don't have to change it. So yeah. I, I think a lot of it comes down to maintainability. Like, what's going to be the easiest for you to maintain? Um, as I said earlier, like, if it's for a client site that you know you're, you personally are going to have to work on later, um, however you are going to understand the content best is probably the best way to write it. And I think that's one of the nice things about WordPress is that there's, yes, there are standards and there are best practices, but there's no real right way for a lot of it. Now, I, other people would probably argue with that, but that's, that's okay. Um, and in my opinion, I, I don't ever think there's a right way. So if you have other ways to do this, feel free to, I don't know, fork the project on GitHub and add things to it. Um, just meant to be kind of a resource. It's public. I'm not, I'm not selfish. I don't want to keep it to myself. But yeah, uh, if you want to contact me or anything, I don't know why you would, but um, I'm at John B. Hartley on Twitter and at John B. Hartley at gmail.com. Or not at John B. Anyway, uh, yeah, at John B. Hartley on Twitter. So thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the day. I think one session left.